our objective here is to evaluate how the timing of prescribed burning influences population dynamics of Ceresia lespedeza. Now, Ceresia has been a, a problem plant in Kansas for, for many, many years. Up to this point, we've uh, largely used only herbicide as a solution. However, some research done in other parts of the country led us to conclude that possibly just changing the timing with which we burn may provide effective control of the plant at a greatly reduced cost and greatly reduced labor level uh, compared with herbicide. Well, after three years of data collection, we now know some things. Fire applied either in the months of August or September strongly controls Ceresia lespedeza. Uh, we're seeing a uh, basal frequency of Ceresia lespedeza drop to about 25% of its original state compared to a conventionally spring burned area that you see here to my left. Uh, we're seeing its appearance in, or its canopy dominance drop by as much as 80%. And every year that we apply fire, at the tail end of the growing season, we completely suppress seed production by Ceresia lespedeza. So not only are we stopping it in its tracks reproductively, but we're also diminishing its vegetative presence here. We believe that we have arrived at a, at a, at a cost-effective avenue of control for this plant. Now, two things I'll tell you about cost. The cash cost of burning is about 75 cents an acre, and the, the cash cost of herbicide application in the fall a product like Met Silphuron is conservatively estimated at about $18 an acre. And one of the things that people will, will express concern about is if they burn pasture after their, steer, after their steers have left rather than uh, before they arrive, that may depress animal performance. And I'm willing to, I'm willing to concede that that may happen. However, the, the margin here is really based on what we might be giving up in steer performance, which is likely to be slight versus what we're giving up uh, by using herbicide rather than fire to convert, control Ceresia lespedeza. The margin is greater than $17 an acre between herbicide cost and fire cost. Now, one of the important things that I'd like to talk about today is the how-to of conducting a growing season fire. I mean, as you can see, I mean, we're in November of the year, but uh, two months ago when we burned the plot that I'm standing on right now, um, there was obviously a lot of green and vigorously growing forage. What you see here would be representative of regrowth approximately nine weeks post fire. On this particular site, there is uh, about a ton and a half of forage dry matter available per acre. And on other sites that we've treated, burned, at the same time, uh, we've got up to twice that much. So regrowth post fire is very vigorous. Uh, no concerns with bare soil, no concerns with changing uh, the floristic composition of the plant community. In fact, uh, the area where I'm standing here would actually measure healthier than a conventionally spring burned area and obviously we have less Ceresia lespedeza. Conventionally when we apply fire in the month of April, a fire is very easy to light but very difficult to control. Uh, these fires are exactly the opposite. Uh, they tend to be difficult to light, but very easy to control. Now, what I have here in my hand is a, is a conventional, commercially available drip torch. Uh, we use half diesel and half gasoline as our torch fuel mixture. And in order to get this fire to light during the growing season, we've actually got to apply the fuel so that it drips down, not onto the green grass, but onto the duff layer, the litter, that accumulates at the soil surface. That's actually what carries the fire. Uh, we, when we light, proceed very slowly, generally by walking with the torch around the perimeter of our area to be burned. If we go too fast, uh, if we try to apply it using a vehicle or we try to apply it in a wheel track uh, of, a, of an ATV or something of that nature, generally the fire is not going to be very successful. We have to get a continuous fire line developed and we have to go slowly. Okay, and as you proceed with the drip torch, you go slow enough and you check your back trail enough to where you're, you're positive that you have a continuous fire line. And once you've established, established that continuous fire line, you get around your area to be burned. You get around the perimeter um, as quickly as your feet will carry you. A growing season fire, as we conventionally light them in March or April, I've said those are 
typically very difficult to control. That fire, once it's lit, will spread laterally and it will also spread with the wind. Uh, it tends to be fairly successful as a backfire. Okay, growing season fires do not do that. Growing season fires are very directional in nature. They don't tend to spread laterally. They move with less than half of, half of the speed of a growing season fire. Uh, physicists at Oklahoma State have figured out that flame, maximum flame height and flame depth in the month of July is, a, is less than half of what it would be in the month of April. So generally not very impressive uh, fire. That fire will creep along right at the soil surface, burning through the understory, leaving a lot of green forage behind. Fortunately for us, that tends to be very hard on late blooming forbs like Ceresia lespediza. Now, this area where I'm standing here today has got beautiful expression of native forbs post fire. I'm looking at some lead plant, I'm looking at some wavy leaf thistle, uh, several native legumes. These things will re express post fire, and for the most part, Ceresia lespediza will not, and that's what prevents it from growing seed. Now getting back to the how-to of, of fire, um, the, uh, the likelihood that in the months of August or September you're going to be successful at getting much of a backfire started is very low, but the good news is the head fires move very slowly and they're very easy to control. If you can get just a little bit of a fire break mowed or, or, uh, uh, or burned, uh, along the, the back of your fire perimeter, the head fire is what is going to carry, carry that fire to success. It may be necessary to come back a, a day or two after the initial fire and light small patches that didn't burn with the initial fire. This is pretty important for complete Ceresia lespediza treatment. So to conclude our, our project today, I just want to recap the, the elements of conducting a growing season fire. Okay, remember that you've got to go slow and you've got to apply your drip torch fuel from above so that it makes its way down to the litter layer that's going to carry the fire. Go slow, count on the head fire only carrying that fire. The back fire is not going to do it. Okay, make sure your fire perimeter is safe. Go slowly. Expect a lot of smoke. Most of that smoke that, that is emitted from a growing season fire is going to be water vapor. Okay, as that wet forage comes into contact with, with the fire, that water vaporizes, so you're going to get a lot of thick, dense smoke. Don't be intimidated. I believe our effective fire window is from about mid-July to about mid-October. I think you'll see similar results to, to what we've seen with our study. These growing season fires are lethal to Ceresia lespediza. They're very easy to control, and quite importantly, okay, if we take some of our acreage here in the state that's normally burned in the month of April and we move that uh, just to where we burn it at a different time of the year, we will greatly lessen, I believe, air quality problems downwind from eastern and central Kansas. That's, it's important to be a good neighbor, folks, and I think that that's uh, an important consideration.